just the same story over and over again, like new, new, new. And it just seems like nothing is really that rare anymore because even if you miss one season, well, the next season there's going to be something else. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. If you love shopping and handbag videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. All your support would be amazing. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers and I just need a little bit more of a push to reach my goal. So uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. I wanted to talk about the pre-love market today. I feel like it could be a little bit stagnating at the moment. Let me know guys, are you finding it harder to sell on your bags or uh, do you feel like the market has changed? Because I've definitely noticed some uh, different patterns uh, throughout the years. I started looking at the pre-love market maybe around 2015, 2016. I was obsessed with the Speedy HL and I wanted to find a really good deal. Early on in my handbag journey I bought a few vintage Louis Vuitton bags, a few vintage Chanel bags and these were things that really appealed to me because I was I guess a little bit intimidated to go into the store. You don't have to spend as much, you might be just wanting to be a little bit more thrifty and also you can shop on the pre-love market from the comfort of your own home. But, uh, the pre-love market sometimes you can buy things on a payment plan which I feel like a lot of people fall into that trap or even on Afterpay, you know, places like Fashion File have Layaway. This is something that I feel like a lot of people who fall into that middle class or lower middle class find extremely tempting. And I think this is the main chunk of clientele that the pre-love market appeals to. Um, now the middle class class hunter bracket recently has been very affected by housing, the cost of living has gone up and we have less time to browse and we're kind of just working our butts off a lot more. During COVID, uh, during lockdown, I will say I was browsing pre-love websites a lot. I was buying a lot, I was selling a lot and the market was doing really well. Back in like 2020, the prices of Chanel bags pre-loved were really high. You were able to sell your bags really easily. Even things like Louis Vuitton multicolor were really trending and those old school Louis Vuitton styles, people were hunting them down. Vintage Chanel was becoming really hot as well during 2020 and 2021. And a lot of people were just finding during that time where we were locked down and we weren't going on holiday, I think a lot of people found enjoyment uh, on hunting down these really rare pieces and the value of them were really high on the pre-love market. But recently, uh, you know, in the year of 2023, as we've started to come out of lockdown and kind of go back into our normal life, I think our priorities sometimes have changed and I've noticed a lot of these uh, really hot bags just kind of sitting on websites for ages. A lot of consignment stores are overflowing with stock. Um, a lot of consignment stores are being a little bit more strict on what they accept as well. So a lot of people are finding they have bags that they want to sell on, but they're finding a lot of consignment stores won't accept certain brands or certain condition. Whereas maybe a few years back, a lot more consignment stores were a little bit more lenient as to what they would be accepting. Thus, uh, a lot of designer bags have lost a lot of value. In general, I've noticed that Chanel bags on the pre-love market are still very expensive. However, I don't think there is as much hype around certain styles as there used to be. Something that was super hyped back in 2018, 2019 to maybe 2021 was definitely the caviar minis. Uh, particularly, I noticed a giant um, increase in some of the really desirable colors like the beiges, the pinks, the uh, even some sorts of red, uh, black obviously. You know back in 2018 they were retailing at 3,800 and the resale value was not much more like maybe like 4,500 for a really desirable color. But it got to a point during 2020 where some of these caviar minis, like I'm talking like the beige, the iridescent colors in caviar, uh, they were going for like over 10,000 Australian dollars, which was a giant leap. Um, and they were kind of just being like, these bags were selling for really high amounts compared to like what they cost back in 2018. And this kind of increase in the pre-love market was quite significant and around this time I decided to sell a lot of bags because I was like okay this is really crazy some of the prices that the prices that these bags are going for um but I recently realized that Chanel is still expensive but it's getting harder to sell certain styles and the value of some styles have dropped a little bit and that's probably because um that middle class bracket 
is not shopping as much and this there's a little bit less interest in some styles same with like the louis vuitton multicolor there was a point where it was quite expensive on the pre-love market compared to a like 2016 era but now I feel like it's kind of dropped a little bit again because while well, not only are Louis Vuitton churning out a lot more like fun colourful collections but I think a lot of people are just less interested in collecting bags as they were during the pandemic because they're starting to go back to their normal lives and they're realising they're not even wearing their bags and a lot of people are actually wanting to downsize their collection which again is over flooding these consignment stores and the pre-love market and there's just too much stock to handle. We're at this point now after um, you know, this kind of lockdown era where we're all buying bags, where the pre-love market is getting a little bit oversaturated and things are just not selling because there's less people interested and the people who are rich are just shopping in the stores. They're still getting these like very desirable bags and the middle class have either maybe already scratched, each that scratch of buying bags like me or they're um, kind of trying to change their habits and maybe shop less and stop browsing less because they've either realized that they have to stop uh, this vicious cycle of buying and selling because that's something I did and I think a lot of people did that during lockdown or they're just finding that they're getting overwhelmed with how many things are getting released all the time from all these brands because the last few years um you know Gucci, Saint Laurent, Chanel, Louis Vuitton there has been a lot more collections than usual like a lot of things like coming out at us on social media we're getting influenced by I mean all these influencers are getting gifted things all the time by all these different brands and it's just becoming like a little bit less interesting because it's just the same story over and over again like new 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 and it just seems like nothing is really that rare anymore because even if you miss one season well the next season there's going to be something else and the price increases have definitely deterred some people but it's got to a point where things are getting at that price where it's so expensive that you wouldn't even really even consider it anymore i know that um if it was back when i was like 25 years old and i went to chanel to buy a mini for what is it now seven thousand something dollars i wouldn't even consider it i just don't think I would even think that's worth it whereas I would back then I was looking more at the pre-love market for minis for like you know three thousand dollars that would be my my limit and that was what I think my limit still would be and a lot of people who are like that age I can't imagine wanting to spend seven thousand eight hundred dollars on a Chanel mini I think also the fear of buying fakes has also been a thing uh, if, even if you look on social media there's a lot more uh, kind of uh, replica pages popping up and a trend towards buying replicas and that kind of deters people from shopping pre-loved because they might be fearful of getting a replica which in turn lowers the value of authentic bags because you're questioning as to whether uh, it's authentic or not and it's kind of yeah killing the pre-love market a little bit. I think there are less people shopping on the pre-love market than there were during the, the lockdowns, especially in Melbourne. For myself, I'm looking at buying more quality items that last a long time, as opposed to uh, these trendy items that you might collect and then sell on. Uh, because there's a lot of that collectability aspect to bags as well that uh, people, I don't know, maybe they're getting sick of it, like collecting anything and they just might want to buy just a few little bags here and there instead of constantly buying and selling. But anyway, I'm not sure. I've just noticed a few things on the pre-love market become less desirable than they were a few years ago and it's getting a little bit more challenging to sell on your bags as well. But let me know guys, have you found shopping on the pre-love market there is... Um, everything is too expensive now and are you finding it hard to actually sell on your bags? I think for myself, uh, I've found a lot of joy out of collecting mainly Hermes bags because they are always kind of expensive to be honest and I think they are things that um, age really well so they always tend to have a good value to them. Uh, one of my best pre-love purchases was probably my um, Omnibus bag because it is 
fully leather it has a goat skin interior and i got it for about two thousand four hundred dollars on vestiaire collective and honestly this bag feels just as substantial as like my birkin which cost me well over that so i think there are still definitely some gems that you can discover on the pre-love market it's just about knowing what to search for and kind of finding gems that no one else has discovered yet but yeah, I mean, I will still shop in the pre-love market for sure because I'm really into vintage and that sort of thing. But as years go by, um, it's getting harder to find those like true gems, like, you know, those Chanel CC jumbos in really good condition, multicolor in good condition. Because um, a lot of these bags from like the 90s were so awesome, but it's getting harder to find them in good condition. And to be honest, I'm kind of over buying junk condition bags because it just doesn't feel as luxurious. Um, and a lot of the newer bags that are coming out from Chanel just don't hold up in the same way. And so I don't know if in a few years the value of these Chanel bags is going to be impacted because a lot of people are experiencing the quality has dropped, which will affect the perception of Chanel bags in general. But I don't know guys, this is just a few thoughts I have. I know this video is very blabby as usual, but let me know, have you noticed any differences in the pre-love market? And uh, thanks for watching my video and I'll talk to you on my next one. Bye!